Hi everybody, uh, what we thought we'd do this evening is answer some questions from our patrons. So uh, we might make this a regular feature depending on how well it goes down, uh, but we get asked lots of questions by our patrons and we get lots, asked lots of questions by you guys and we do try and answer them all in the comments section, um, but we thought what would make a nice little feature would be to uh, answer our patron questions directly in the form of a video yep. but to keep it brief and make it not too boring and rapid fire we're going to do 10 questions in 10 minutes so I've got my stopwatch here we'll see how we get on <laughs> uh, but you've got we've got 60 seconds to answer each question so I'll ask the question and then uh, we'll I'll start the stopwatch for whoever's going to answer it the first one is going to be for Jack so question number one Jack uh, from Deborah um, who's one of our patrons. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, for Jack, what are your interests and how are you going to spend time while on passage to while away the hours? Three, two, one, go. Well, my interest currently is whittling, reading, obviously, um, and lots of other things, but mainly whittling. And I was just wondering if anybody wants me to make a, a magic wand or something for them. I can You've been whittling whittle. Harry Potter wands recently, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. And whittling is one of the things I shall be doing on passage. And owls. And owls. Just yeah. Maybe. Whittle ones and owls. But Whittle you like ones. reading, you like drawing, and you'll yeah. be plenty of schoolwork to do. Yeah, you love watching David Attenborough I do, stuff. Yes. And um, But he's not glued to screens all the time. We do have a TV up here. We have got Starlink. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, you know who you are. Uh, but uh, we don't spend all of our time glued to screens, and yet yeah, Jack does lots of other stuff. And of course, sailing the Walker Bay. Yeah. Once we get out on anchorages. Yeah, not on passage. He could follow on, us. Not on passage, yeah, <laughs> but on anchorage. Yeah. Right, five seconds left. Four, three, two, one. one. Stop. Question number two. Um, question number two and number three, Melissa can answer. Uh, um, Emilian Picu Pilcu. Um, you've been a patron for ages, so pro apologies for pronouncing your name wrong. And Kevin Perkins, these are kind of the same question. How are your plans moving along at the moment? And have you developed a loose plan yet? And what are the plans? I'm getting a bit impatient with the Steel Melody refit and would like to know when you will be setting sail to warmer waters. So, Melissa, do you want to take that one? Three, yeah. two, one, go. So our plans are um, currently to stay here for winter in North Wales and spring, as soon as the weather's passed, we want to move from here. Um, we haven't decided yet, it all depends how bad the winter is, as whether we're going to go north and try and circumnav the UK first or just go straight down south into the Med. Yeah. Um, but we'd love to know what you think. I think lots of people commented previously, but we're, we're not completely decided we just know that we want to be leaving here in spring and we've got a, a wedding coming up next spring yeah my daughter's getting married so i think it, it, if we have a very mild winter and the spring starts early then we'll make an, an early start we don't want to be going around scotland in the in bad weather but we might do a circumnav if we can get away early enough um and but if not if the winter carries us through into sort of february and march then we'll probably just head south so, yeah, I think that, and of course, my yeah, daughter's wedding. Yeah, and yeah, impatient with Still Melody. Um, obviously, we need to, um, to get some money in the in the sailing kitty, yeah. so we do need to work on her. Yeah. Okay, that was a minute and five seconds. Failed. Eh, eh. <laughs> question, next question. Um, it's, it kind of ties into the last one, which uh, I will take this one, which is, is your departure tied to selling Steel Melody? So I'll start now. Uh, yes, it is. Um, Partly financially, because uh, we've got, you know, a little bit of savings, not a lot, uh, but our money, a lot of our money is tied up in that boat, or a big chunk of money is tied up in that boat. So financially, we need to sell her before we go. Uh, as you know, we are extremely keen to get her floating, functional, upright, with a working engine, working steering, working rig, so that whoever buys her can sail her away. Somebody actually came to look at her the other day, expressed an interest in buying her, but even though they only live 30 miles away, they would still have to put her on a low loader to move her away. And they completely legitimately said, if you can get her in the water, I'll sail her away or at least motor her away. Yeah. She just opens up to so many more people. Uh, but also 
if we're, we're going to sell her eventually, even if not immediately, and we, what we don't want to do is be having to be on the south coast or of England or the north coast of France and driving back to yeah. North Wales to work on Steel Melody. That would be mental. So we've got a, oh, I'm over a minute. Uh, <laughs> Jonathan Baker, I believe, hi John, is coming in a couple of weeks to spend five solid days with me. Uh, and if anybody wants to join us, uh, or we're doing a bit of a Mark Wildlings here, we can't put you up. Well, we might be able to put you up on the boat, but we want to have a mad five days where we blitz Steel Melody and get her ready to put in the water or knock a big chunk out of that Yeah, work. I know this has gone way, way over, but yes, you said yes, it is tied to selling her. Um, no, it's tied to finishing, her, well, getting her in the water and complete. Yeah, yeah. If she's ready and we can forget about her, as long as she's on the market, then we can leave. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Once she's ready to sell, then we can go because I don't mind travelling back to meet somebody to exchange contracts or whatever. So, yeah. Uh, right. Next question. That was that went. That was a minute and a half. Fail. Fail. Uh -uh. Next question. When you do set sail, what will be your expected range? And how long will you guys be able to stay self-sufficient? And are there any more mods to be done to Ocean Melody to extend your range? Um, so do you want to take that or shall I do this one? Uh, we can do a bit. A bit each. Right, Melissa, you start. Three, two, one, go. So I think our, um, that will massively change as we go along and add things to it. Mm. But currently it's... So currently... Um, We've got one bladder tank in this side and one bladder tank in that side, so that's 300 litres of water. There are two more tanks to upgrade to, which will give us a full complete, this is fresh water, uh, fresh water of 1200 litres, uh, 3, 6, 9, 12. Uh, but uh, those two at the back aren't yet commissioned and don't need to be because we're not going to be truly off grid until we are truly out in the boonies somewhere. Um, I've got to finish the cockpit enclosure to get the solar on um, and we'll eventually have about 1200 watts of solar on board. Uh, so we've, we've got the panels, uh, um, as you've seen or you will see in this week's video, the cockpit enclosure is getting a lot further along. Mm -hmm. We've got enough solar. We could do with another three lithium batteries. We've got three. I want to upgrade that to six and we want to get a water maker. Yeah. So the upgrades will just in, in a nutshell, three more lithium batteries, uh, extend the solar by the water maker and uh, commission those tanks. And then diesel wise, there's a long range diesel tank in the keel, which is 900 litres. We want to recommission that because it was decommissioned by the previous owner. And that will give us a range of, I don't know, a thousand miles of motoring or more. Um, and our expected, we would expect to want to be able to stay off grid for a couple of months. Uh, yeah, but with currently uh, with these two tanks in commission, we could probably do a week. I reckon we could do more. I reckon yeah. we could do a fortnight. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Electric wise, we're fine. Once the solar panels are on, we could go indefinitely. Diesel wise, carry jerry cans. And that, our mm. limiting factor is the amount of fresh water at the moment. Yeah. So and we'd maker. love a water maker eventually. Eventually, yeah. So two weeks is our range at the moment. Two to three months is our goal. Uh, and those are the upgrades that we need to do. So that question was from Mark and Jane W. When do you set sail and what will be your range? The next question is from MV Liberty 2, Barb and Ray. Looking to make a hard top, but more like 12 foot by 12 foot. How big was yours and what was the approximate cost of materials? I'll take this one. So ours is basically eight foot square, uh, apart from the fact that we've got a, a rounded front. And by the time we got the foam, the glass cloth, the epoxy resin, the hardener, the peel ply, uh, it's come to around about 1100 pounds. I don't know what that is where you live, but around about 1100 pounds. And that's just for the fiberglass bits, of course, the stainless steel uh, is another matter. Um, there's another story behind the stainless steel and uh, and I'll be making st stainless brackets to hold the solar panels up. But for the fiberglass section, yeah, uh, around about 1100 quid for 12 foot, uh, for eight foot square. So I think for a 12 foot square one, you probably wouldn't be talking much more because we've got more than enough. Mm. I would say you could probably yeah. do the whole thing for 1200 quid. Uh, so that was 45 seconds. Hey. That wasn't too bad, really success. Next question from Scott and Sarah. Melissa can answer this one because I haven't got a clue. How do you bank and handle finances when you're at sea? What banks or financial methods work best to buy provisions, diesel, etc. as you travel the world? What do boat people do? And all those fees and conversions can add up. Uh, reset. Melissa, three, two, one, go. That's a really good question. I'm hoping someone's going to answer it in the comments. Um, something that I am currently studying and 
trying to work out what's the best thing to do. We've got um, a couple of friends that work on super yachts and stuff that have um, spoke to me about banking, but I am nowhere near qualified enough to answer that yet because we haven't left the UK. So currently we're still just using our UK bank account. Yeah. Um, so it's um, any information that anyone wants to send over to us, then we'd be greatly appreciated. Nice, yeah. success. Um, question number nine, Melissa can answer as well, which is what kind of shakedown cruise will you do before getting underway? Three, two, one, go. So um, we're doing little day sales and stuff in the Straits, but um, in the Menai Straits near where we live. Um, but our shakedown cruise is it's basically going to be leaving, isn't it? And yeah. going port to port. Um, because because we're in the UK, we know that we can get things that we need and we want to leave and just start heading either north or south when we decide yeah. and, um, you know, fix things as we go. Um, yeah. So that, that will be our shakedown. Yeah, so really. that, I didn't I did say this is from Stephen Fowler. Yeah, a lot of people have said, you know, uh, oh, isn't it dangerous taking small children and heading out to sea? Well, we're not heading out to sea. We're heading from here to the, the, next, the next marina, marina. Yeah. <laughs> not, not the next marina, with. but the next anchorage, which yeah. is a five hour day sail. And then from there, we'll do another five hour mm -hmm. day sail and another five hour day sail. And we'll just port hop. Yeah. And obviously and, we had a big shakedown on the way back from yeah. Dartmouth, which gave us a nice That was 400 nautical of, miles. Yeah. It gave us a list of stuff that needs doing. And it proved to us that the boat is, is excellent. Um, yeah. So, but so yeah, so port hopping um, and sort of day sales to start with until we feel more comfortable and then it'll By the time longer. we do our first crossing, I don't even think we're going to do a crossing of Biscay because I think we're going to go around the edge of Biscay because there's so many beautiful places to visit around the edge of Biscay. Why would you go across unless you're in a big rush? We might we might find that we've hit by weather or time. I reckon you're over time, Andy. I'm over time. <laughs> yeah, that's a minute and 30 seconds. Uh, next question for Jack from Anonymous Trucker is what books have you read lately and can you tell us about them? Um, I've been reading Goblet of Fire again, <laughs> like the eighth time, and it's about this tri wizard, basically. I think Olympic. everybody in the world knows what yeah. the Goblet of Fire. Yeah, is there Olympic, any Olympic Olympic a wizard Olympic thing? Yeah, that's but... dangerous. Ollie's head is brushing on your mic. Oh. There you go. Is there is there any books that you've been yeah. reading? Uh, I started reading David Attenborough's Life on Earth. Nice. A while ago. Yeah. Cool. That's a good book. I, I've only got into, a few pages into it. What were you reading? Time. Were you reading Will Bryson, A Short History of Nearly Everything? Oh yeah, I did do that. Um, I haven't finished it yet. That's one of the ones that you're plugging through. And yeah. The Silmarillion. Oh no, I've read that. You've read that? Twice. Okay. There you go. Really good. Like Anything that. else? I tried to start reading um, short, no, lost histories of Middle Earth. And that was a bit boring. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So there you go. That's what Jack's go. reading at the minute. And I'm um, sure there's plenty others. Jack's always got a book on the go. Oh, on the book subject, Jack's got how many books in your cabin, did you say? About 120. About 120. Um, but he also has a Kindle. Uh, and a lot of people, when they saw that last time, said, why don't you get Jack a Kindle? He's got about three Kindles. Uh, and he uses them and he loves them. But and when we go away to stay with people, he'll take his Kindle. But it's his bedroom and he likes to have books, real books with real paper on the shelves of his bedroom. I just like bedroom. the feeling and the smell. And <laughs> over time, I think that will dwindle down as uh, more books come onto the Kindle and uh, he gets you know, interested in other things. But uh, I mean, not that you ever grow out of books, but... Um, but yeah, he's got plenty of actual paper books and a Kindle, so yeah, no worries. I despise for that. myself if I stop liking books. Yes. yes. <laughs> there you go. Well done. Right, that was more question. than sixty seconds. That was. <laughs> Last question is not from a patron, but it was from somebody on the comments. Uh, K Vice eighteen sixty two. Um, it's a very long comment, so I'm going to kind of paraphrase it a little bit. Uh, but it says, hi, I uh, checked on some of your episodes. You put so much into, uh, into the steel boat, you're unlikely to get an appropriate, respectable sale price. With your increasing community members, why not investigate the following? Getting good insurance, cover charter, creating an unusual charter that offers different things to a normal boat uh, and it offers people the chance to chest out that type of life. Three, offering members a stake in the get right away to get some cash flow, but keeping the majority of decisions pre-arranged by, 
backed by guarantee of stakes, something like that. Mm. Inviting someone reliable or a group, a, a existing entity we'll put to the supervise the charter. Comment on the screen so you can pause it and read it. And yeah, uh, and then number six, deciding on a standard set of skills and link with, uh, that people have to have in order to charter the boat. The above might afford you more cash in the long run and keep your alternatives for you. Uh, uh, that offers unusual participation for others. Uh, the answer to the question is all of that. <laughs> that. That kind of answers its own question. That sounds fantastically complicated to me and sounds like a massive pain in the bum. Yeah, currently at this stage in our life, we, you know, we've moved out of our house and everything because we want simple, simple yeah. and we don't want to overcomplicate things with charters and stuff. And especially chartering out a, a unusual an old steel boat, an old steel boat. Yeah. No, um, no. We also got asked, we haven't got the comment here, but we also got asked the question as to whether we would raffle still melody off. Yeah. And uh, no, because we want her to go to the right owner. Yeah, I think personally, I, I would think that that would be it. Would be I would be worried if somebody chartered Steel Melody because I know that boat inside out, and I want to. When she sells, I want somebody to buy her that that I've checked can handle what she is. Because owning and running a steel boat is not like owning and running, uh, you know, a, a perfectly normal. Uh, plastic charter boats they're vastly mm. different different beasts yeah. and even plastic charter boats need a lot of maintenance but a steel boat is a different thing altogether and i think it would be very unethical to 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 um raffle her off to some randomer who just buys a ticket and then ends up with a boat that they didn't really want can't really handle and she would just end up yeah be fine if she was a little hands. day sailor or something yeah, but. yeah i just yeah, i wouldn't do it i wouldn't do it uh, and um the right getting the right person for the boat is as important as just getting rid of her so uh, yeah anyway um we're not doing that uh, chartering out i know that uh, vagabond have done a charter on their first boat yeah which is great if you've got Fantastic. an agency running it yeah. and everything we're with the right big. boat we're not that big we're not that uh, you know we just want simplicity we want one boat almost no possessions and to go yeah. and now it is time for us to go yes this is um this is us signing out thank you very much for watching let us know if you want to do this more regularly uh it is patrons because we feel like they're our patrons we want to give back to them uh, thank you very much patrons for what you give to us in helping support what we do and uh if you want to ask us some questions head over and join the patron family it's very very cheap it's three dollars per Three dollars per episode, but you can cap it to one episode per week per month. Yeah, we might, I might actually go on and add another tier, add another which tier. is a dollar. Yeah, so we're going to change some of the tiers on Patreon, but it makes it super super cheap to go over. And you do get we regularly our patrons will tell you we regularly upload clips from what we're doing and real time updates, and they've got access to a WhatsApp group, so you can contact us directly and things like that. Uh, and if you are a patron and didn't know about the WhatsApp group, message us because some people have come on board and aren't aware yet. Yeah. Anyway, uh, cheers, guys. Thank you very much. See Thank you, you. Uh, See on you. Wednesday for our next episode. Bye. Bye. Ta-da.